Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with a homemade function. We have f of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1 equals x minus the square root of x squared plus 1. And we're supposed to evaluate f of 2 plus f of 3 plus f of 6. The reason why I call this a homemade function is because I kind of came up with the idea. But again, uh, these problems are kind of easy to come up with. Anyway, so I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. And if you start with the second method, does that become the first method? That's something else to think about. Anyways, so for my first method, I'm going to use kind of like a, a direct approach. If I'm trying to evaluate f of 2, I kind of need to make this or turn this into 2. So. I'm going to set that value inside the parentheses uh, equal to 2, 3, and 6 uh, successively, okay? And then each time I'm going to find an x value, plug that in on the right-hand side, and then that's going to give me the answer. Make sense? Okay, great. So let's go ahead and set this equal to 2 first. And we're going to do this three times. First, when you set it equal to 2, this is a radical equation, so isolate the radical and square both sides. That's going to give you x squared plus 1 equals 4 minus 4x plus x squared. The nice thing is x squared cancels out, leaving us with 4x equals 3 and x equals 3 fourths. Great. We got the x value, so we kind of need to substitute that into the right-hand side, which is x minus square root of x squared plus 1, right? So if you replace x with 3 fourths, you're going to get 3 fourths minus the square root of 9 over 16 plus 1. That is going to be 25 over 16. And that should be 5 fourths. And 3 fourths minus 5 fourths should be negative 2 fourths or negative 1 half. Great. So, in other words, our value on the right-hand side becomes negative one-half, which means f of 2 is equal to negative one-half. And we're going to be doing it for 3 and 6 similarly. So, in other words, we're trying to basically, this is what we're trying to do. We're setting this equal to a value, like 2, 3, or 6. And then from here, we're finding the value of the other expression. And that's going to give us the answer. Make sense? So now let's go ahead and set the left-hand side equal to 3, and just like before, solve the equation. Isolate the radical, square both sides, cancel out the x squared, and guess what this gives you? Put the 6x on the left, subtract, and 6x is 8, and x is equal to 4 thirds. And if you plug it in here, then you get 4 thirds minus the square root of 4 thirds squared, which is 16 over 9 plus 1. Now, before we had 9 over 16, now we have 16 over 9, which is interesting, right? That's going to be 25 over 9. I mean, 25 over, yeah, it's 25 over 9. And then uh, the square root is going to be 5 thirds, and their difference is going to be negative 1 third. Okay, make sense? So our value, x minus that, is going to equal this, which means f of 3 is equal to negative 1 third. So we got f of 2 is equal to negative 1 half, f of 3 is negative 1 third. A pattern is emerging, or is it? Okay, let's see. We've got to do a little bit more work before we can conclude that, and hopefully the second method will make it much more clear. Now this time I'm supposed to evaluate f of 6, so remember our function was given like this. And then we are supposed to now set this equal to 6 and solve. Okay, isolate the radical, square both sides. Obviously, this time numbers are greater, larger. That's okay. Put the 12x on the left, subtract 1, and you get the x value. Now, you got to plug it in to this, okay? That is the fun part. Remember, we are given that this is 6. We're supposed to evaluate this one. How do you do it? You just plug it in, and 
While doing it, you have to square 35 over 12, which is 1,225 divided by 144. By the way, how do I know that? 35 squared, there's a shortcut. I believe we talked about this in one of the shorts. To square 35, uh, you got to take the 3, the tens digit. What is 1 more than 3? 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Just attach the 25 and you're good to go. Okay, that's a shortcut anyways. So from here we get 35 over 12. Now I'm thinking this is supposed to be a nice integer. And here it gave me 6. So this is 35 over 12. And this is going to be 6 times 12 is 72. This is supposed to be uh, 37 over 12. In other words, this number is supposed to be 37 when I add it. By the way, I forgot to add. It's not 1,225. It is supposed to be that plus 1. And obviously, that's going to be 1,369 over 144. And this just happens to be 37 squared because it's supposed to be, right? It's supposed to work. Okay. This is going to be negative 2 twelfths or negative 1 sixth. And this is equal to that. Therefore, f of 6 becomes negative 1 over 6. So, we were trying to evaluate f of 2 plus f of 3 plus f of 6. And that just becomes negative 1 half minus 1 third minus 1 6, which I can write as negative 1 times 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 6. But this is just 1. So the answer is going to be negative 1. Make sense? Wow, it was that simple. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, which is obviously more fun. Uh oh, we don't have any space, so we kind of have to use this space. That's what we have. Great, that's a challenge. So now, here's our function. Here's our function. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the relationship. Look, look at this. These two expressions are conjugates, right? So what does that mean? I can multiply them and get something nice. So let's go ahead and do it. And let's call this t in the process. And if you multiply x plus the square root of x squared plus 1 by x minus the square root of x squared plus 1, from difference of two squares, you're supposed to get x squared minus x squared plus 1. And guess what that's equal to? Negative 1. Hmm, that's interesting. If this is t, then this becomes negative 1 over t. Does that make sense? Because their product is negative 1. Just like two perpendicular lines whose slopes give us negative 1 when multiplied. Make sense? So if that's t, this is negative 1 over t. Wow, it was that easy? Come on, why didn't you tell us earlier? Because that is what's beautiful about the second method. The first method is going to be a little painful. So you can appreciate the second method better. So from here, f of 2 is going to be negative 1 half. f of 3 is going to be negative 1 third and negative 1 sixth. And this is going to give us negative 1 as the answer. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.